If you spend any time online talking about Tesla, I'm sure you've heard this claim over and over again. Hardware 3 is old, it's underpowered, it can't run modern AI models, and here's the uncomfortable truth. That criticism isn't wrong. Hardware 3, about an eight-year-old technology, really is constrained. Limited power, limited compute, and critically limited memory bandwidth. But instead of declaring millions of deployed cars obsolete, Tesla has chosen a very different path. They rewrote the math so old hardware could keep doing new tricks you could actually say they're using software to squeeze all of the juice out of that eight-year-old hardware lemon. Today, I'm going to show you how Tesla just patented a way to run higher precision neural networks on low precision silicon without changing the chip. Let's take a look. Before we start, a quick shout out to my channel sponsor, Joa. They make amazing accessories for your Tesla and other EVs and have incredible warranties and customer service too. In fact, I use their accessories daily. Be sure to check the link in the description to get 5% off a fan-cooled phone charger, a portable tire inflator, a fold-out lap table, and so much more. And they make perfect gifts for you and your EV-loving friends too. So check out the link to get 5% off, and now let's get back to it. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So today I want to talk about this patent, which was published just a couple of days ago, Systems and Methods for Bit Augmented Arithmetic Convolution. The important part about this is they're able to squeeze a lot more performance out of the old Hardware 3 hardware, which was developed in the late 20 teens and came out in Tesla Model 3 vehicles in the 2018-2019 timeframe. So it's getting close to a decade old hardware. And a lot of people, including me, were thinking there was no way that Tesla was going to be able to shoehorn all of the new neural network goodness that's in AI4 or Hardware 4 cars and retrofit that back into old Hardware 3 cards. But it looks like Tesla's figured out a way and in conjunction with the patent that I talked about yesterday, you can check that out up here and I will also put it at the end of this video and in the description. Anyway, you should watch both of these videos together because it shows how Tesla is playing with the very nature of numbers themselves and how they're stored internally with computers to create a massive amount more performance out of both Hardware 3 and the new AI4 or Hardware hardware for vehicles. And by the way, real quick, if you're enjoying this, please consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. I really do enjoy explaining this stuff and it would be a great early birthday present. And man, if you want to learn a topic, consider teaching it. It's pretty crazy how you can be a little bit loose about things when you're just sort of reading about it yourself. But when you sit down to think about teaching it to somebody else, you're like, wow, I really don't understand all of the minutia. So hopefully I've got that. And again, if you enjoy it, definitely let me know about that. Thank you so much. So I think this image actually helps explain things the best as possible. And yeah, it's not very explanatory. If you know anything about patents, the whole point about a patent is to describe something in as much detail as you have to legally without giving anything away. So they intentionally make a lot of these graphics really, really abstract and not understandable. But the important thing that happens here is this D plane, in other words, a simple convolution that D planes a 16 bit number, a large number into smaller numbers, into two eight bit numbers. You then take the two eight bit numbers, you do whatever processing you need to using your neural networks. And at the end, you put that back together again. So the number one thing to understand is that Hardware 3, it's 2018 hardware. It was designed to be integer eight. It's got integer eight, multiply, accumulate nodes. And of course, multiply, accumulate is exactly what matrix multiplication is. You multiply things together and then you accumulate. So it's got a lot of these registers, but they're only eight bit. In other words, one, zero, zero, one, you know what? There's only eight of these binary digits and that allows you 256 decimal numbers of resolution. That doesn't give you a lot of resolution about what you're doing, but it fits within very tight power envelopes and it narrows the memory bandwidth issue so you can push a lot of stuff through memory very, very rapidly. Now, of course, the newer AI4 hardware has 16 bits and so they're able to deal with about 65,768 if I remember correctly. So the resolution is substantially higher with that. So that seems pretty intractable. You're trying to go from a resolution of about 65,000 down to a resolution of 256. It seems like that's impossible and therefore the older hardware 3 is simply not going to be able to operate like that but here's the trick that hardware 3 board has two redundant chips that do the exact same thing so what if you could split this 16-bit number into two 8-bit numbers and process them concurrently and that's exactly what they're doing here that's the big picture of what they're doing so in theory that allows you to have that higher dynamic range but how do you separate these numbers out in order to do that process that seems impossible well that's where tesla's patent comes in 
So let's discuss using a very simplified decimal example of this. Now, obviously everything will be in binary the way that that's internally calculated, but that's a lot harder for me to understand and I think you too. So we'll just use decimal numbers. So we've got a bunch of numbers here in our very rudimentary picture. So this is a grayscale picture and you've got a value of 1342 up here, which is relatively white. If you had your little four by four pixel image coming in from your camera, this would be a relatively light pixel. This one down here, 61 would be relatively dark. You've got different shades of gray in between there. So you can see that here. You've got your matrix X, which is 1342, 987, 451, et cetera, et cetera. But let's say that our resolution in decimal numbers was only two digits. So while 91 would fit fine, that's less than 100, 1342 or 987 doesn't fit. So what are we going to do to fix this problem? The obvious thing, especially if you watched my yesterday's video would be, hey, what if we just make this 1.342 times 10 to the third power? So in other words, we're just gonna say 1.3 times 10 10 to the third, that separates things out into the mantissa, that's the 1.342, that's the decimal number, and the exponent, which is three. And of course you can do the same thing for all these others. But here's where the problem is, you split this into something which still requires a lot of resolution, you need 1.342 in the mantissa, but you've only got the capability of storing the first two numbers, 1.3. So you lose this 4.2, you lose that precision on this back end, and in the meantime, the exponent of three is not using your bit resolution at all. Three is very small compared to a number that could range between zero and 99. So you need to split things up in a much more clever manner where you actually are able to split the precision into two. And by the way, you also want to avoid multiplication and especially division wherever humanly possible. Again, as we discussed with yesterday's patent, because addition operations are far, far cheaper than multiply operations in computer hardware. And this is where a trick that once you realize what the trick is, you'll be like, oh my gosh, this is the simplest thing in the world. But basically you break it into most significant bits or MSB and least significant bits or LSB. The MSB is just X divided by hundred in this case. Again, this will be binary. So it'll be eight bits for the most significant and eight bits for the least significant, but we'll just assume two bits decimal for approximate equivalence. But anyway, you're gonna do X divided by hundred. And as noted here in the patent, we can do this through a simple convolution. And a convolution of course is a kernel. It's a filter that you place over your original image or input space and you multiply and add these numbers together and out of that you get an output result. Well, in this case, we're doing as simple as possible. It's a kernel of one with a value of 0.01. .01. So effectively you're dividing by hundred or multiplying by 0 0.01. And then the bias is something you add to everything. You can just leave the bias at zero, but just for completeness, we're gonna include that. And then of course you throw away the decimal number. You don't need that anymore. And so you can see after dividing by hundred, 1342 now becomes 13, 987 becomes nine, 451 becomes four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these bottom numbers, of course, that are less than hundred just have leading numbers of zero. And you might look up here and say, wait, 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 we have to divide by 100. That is a very expensive operation. Division is terrible. You don't want to do division. But look what you can do. You can simply bit shift over two bits, right? You can just take that decimal point. So think of 1342.0. Just take that decimal point and move it to the left one, to the left two. And again, for a 16-bit number, you'd move it over eight decimal points. You just throw away the right half of the thing and you're done. You don't have to do that actual division. You just do a bit shift. So you're avoiding that division. And out of that, you're getting these numbers 13, 9, 4, and 1, etc. And now once we've done that, once we've calculated that most significant bit matrix, which is the exact same size as the original matrix, we can subtract off that high value number and create the least significant bits. And how we do that is now a two by one kernel. You have a value of one and minus 100. So what does that do? You multiply 1342 by one, so you get the same thing out, so that's easy. And then you take 100 times the most significant bit and subtract that. So we can look at this as a two-step process. The most significant bits is 1342 divided by 100, or remember you just shift over the decimal place by two and throw away the remainder. So you get 13 out of that. And then our next kernel is the original number, right? So even though it says multiply by one, you don't even have to multiply by one. You just take that original number. You then take the most significant bit, which is 13. You multiply it by 100 and you subtract. And again, you can just do this by bit shifting. So what you can do is you can take that 13, which is 13.0 and move the decimal place over two to the right. So you get 1300 and 1342 minus 1300, voila, gives you 42, which is the least significant bit. So you've broken your number now into two equal precision numbers. 13 and 42 are both numbers that fit well within the dynamic range of zero to 99. So that's fantastic. And now you can operate on both of those in parallel with each other. And so here you can see the least significant bit. You've got all of these numbers, which are just the remainder, whatever is left when we've taken off the most significant bits. So Tesla calls this deplaning 
In other words, it separates out this larger 16-bit number, or in our case, a four-digit number. It splits it into two twos, and then you use the two parallel pipelines, the two identical chips in hardware three. You take those 8-bit numbers, you then do all of your convolution functions, you do your neural network training, and then at the end, you put them back together again. So notice the input is 16-bit. The whole thing in the middle is all being done with 8-bit, so you can do it on these original max, these original multiply accumulators that only work at 8-bits, and then at the end, you can output 16-bit numbers. And the way you do that, of course, is just kind of reversing the process you already have. So you've done your stuff, so these numbers are not going to be the same anymore after you've done the convolution and all the training and everything, but let's just assume that this popped out the same. So you have 1342. So your original most significant bit was 13, and your least significant bits was 42. You just take 100 times this, or again, you don't actually have to do the multiplication, but you just bit shift it over. So you go 13.0, add two decimal places, that's 1300, add 42, which is a very, very simple operation. You get 1342. Now, again, after the convolution and after all the training and stuff, this number is going to be different. It might be 971, but that's fine. You take the nine, you shift the decimal place over, so you get 900. You take the 71, you put those together, and out pops a 16-bit number, which is the high-precision number that you originally wanted. So when I said that Tesla was using software to squeeze the hardware lemon, I really meant it. They're actually taking the fact that they built a redundant system in the original hardware. That was very forward thinking of Tesla, but what they're doing now is they're taking each of those and treating those as a little mini computer that's able to do a lot of this work internally, and then they can put the numbers back together again at the end. So look what we've done. We've taken 16-bit high precision numbers. We reduced them down to 8-bit. We don't have to do hardly any multiplication, which is very expensive. Almost everything is just bit shifting, in other words, moving the decimal place and adding things together, which computers can do incredibly quickly. So even though this hardware is basically archaic at this point, it's about eight years old, they can squeeze out performance that will allow this computer to operate on the modernly trained 16-bit numbers that have been trained up for AI4 or Hardware 4. They're able to now use this in AI3 or Hardware 3. And so far from Hardware 3 being deprecated and no longer useful, I think what we'll see over the next few months is a version 14 of full self-driving that works on hardware three. Is it going to be just as good as hardware four? No, because you're making compromises. The training in the pipeline has to be done differently. You have to train this in a different manner than you do with just a straight up 16 bit number. Will it operate about 90% or 95% as well as AI four hardware? Yeah, it probably will, which is gonna be a substantial jump over the current 12 point X full self driving software that is currently in hardware three cars. So while everybody else basically wrote off this hardware and said it was going to be impossible to upgrade, Tesla didn't accept those limits. Instead, they took the hardware limits, they took another look at it, and basically reinvented the way they use numbers to work around these hardware limits and allow eight-year-old hardware to operate like new. And as always, I am super impressed by Tesla's engineers. What an amazing job. What a why didn't I think of that kind of moment. What they do day in and day out, even down to reinventing the way we think about numbers, is really genius. Alrighty, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Again, definitely watch the other video if you haven't yet because the two of these things tie together. They're all about thinking about numbers in a different way than people normally would and squeezing every ounce of performance out of the hardware that they've got. While you're leaving a comment, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps YouTube's algorithm for other people to find it. And of course, like I said previously, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content and consider it an early birthday present. My birthday's coming up at the end of the month, so I would very much appreciate that. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.